Hey friends, welcome in. Today I will be building and discussing the Mr. Su TKL keyboard by Owl Labs. And this is the R1 over here. I myself will be trying for the R2, so that way I have a good sense of comparison and what to expect firsthand. Now, TKL keyboards are my preferred format when it comes to keyboards, so this is definitely one of the boards that piques my interest. Let's dive in. Okay, so first off, this board is borrowed and was already built with a hot swap PCB and aluminum plate. Switches are the Boba LT by Gazoo, and keycaps are the InfiniKey Comfy, which are Dysa PBT. Stabilizers are pre-installed with Duroc V2s that have been modded with Superloop Synthetic Grease and Crytox 205 Grade Zero. My friend also added some foam underneath the spacebar here, and I really like this idea as it does make it produce a very pleasant sound. I will most likely be trying this mod out in my future builds. Here's a quick sound test of this build before I took it apart and rebuilt it to my own specs, which you'll see later. So the Suit R1 ran mid-2021 and had a pretty quick delivery time of 2-3 to three weeks with 4 different color options of silver, blue, red, and green with Windows key or Windows keyless. This is a gasket mounted keyboard that uses 2 optional layers of foam. You have the bottom poron foam layer that goes between the PCB and the bottom case, another layer that goes between the PCB and the plate, and then you also have these gasket socks that go around the edge of the plate to cushion and take out any friction between the metal case enclosures when fully assembled. Pricing wise, it was $315 US for the body, $20 for the plate, $55 for a hot swap PCB, and $45 for a solder PCB. And with the plate options, you get PC, Palm, FR4, and aluminum. So you're looking at a total of about 380 or 390 US dollars before shipping, depending on which PCB you go for. Now, if you're going for ANSI layout, both the hot swap and solder PCB support Sangin bottom row, whereas the ISO layout will only support Sangin on the solder PCB. That is, if Sangin is your thing. There's also split backspace and split left shift on the ISO layout as well. Material-wise, it's got a three-piece aluminum enclosure that makes up the case with two pieces of PVD stainless steel weights that are pre-assembled and sitting in the middle of the bottom case. Now, there is a piece of plastic film covering the inside here, and it was advised not to be removed for protection. Here's why. Some people will build their keyboards with very flexible components like PC or palm plates, where if you type or press down too hard, the PCB can flex down having contact with the metal bottom case and potentially getting short-circuited. However, the Mr. Suit keyboard does come with a couple poron foam dampening layers you can use. One of those layers is used at the very bottom between the PCB and bottom case. This foam can be used to protect your PCB from touching metal. Now, some people don't like using the foam because it dampens the sound of the keyboard too much. So depending on your acoustic preference and build, you may want to leave this plastic foam on. I also want to talk about the flexibility of the Mr. Suit TKL plates. It is known that the PC and palm plates are more flexible and softer materials, yes, whereas plates made out of aluminum or brass are stiffer. But because of all these cutouts as seen even on the aluminum plate option for Mr. Suit, this naturally harder and stiffer plate material is also very flexible. So overall, this keyboard in general is a softer and more flexible typing experience compared to something like the Mode 80 and the plates it comes with. 
Aesthetically, I like the concept of this design. The top case is a very minimal style and in my eyes, that's a good thing because it's not very distracting during use on a regular basis. However, when you flip over to the bottom side, this is where the creativity is. You have the visible PVD stainless steel weights that are cut to resemble a suit's lapel and tie knot, hence the name. As for the word suit written out on the center weight, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Part of me feels like it would look cleaner if there was nothing written or engraved on it, but the other part of me says that the font and style used is done quite elegantly. I don't feel strongly about leaning either way, so I think it's neutral if anything. Another small preference of mine here are the visible screws underneath. Eight visible screws for me is a bit much. This is not a deal breaker, but it's a minor thing. On the bright side, it is on the bottom and not something you'll actively see during normal use. I also like how the top and bottom case was intentionally separated here from the side profile, because if they were just sandwiched together and there was a closed gap seam, it would have looked, for a lack of better explanation, lower quality. So this was a good decision to intentionally leave a bit of gap and show that middle case piece underneath. Then we also have the USB-C port in the center. I like that. Personally, I prefer the USB-C to be centered on a keyboard or far left. Reason being is because most people have their PCs on the right side of the desktop. Not all, but most. Example here, Mode 80 with USB-C on the right, the cable ends up looking a bit awkward when displayed on the desk, especially when you have a coiled aviator cable. I think the coil has a better alignment above the keyboard if the USB cable was plugged in center or far left. So, keyboards with USB-C plugged in on the right is best used with a non-coiled cable in my opinion. The surface finish on the Mr. Suit is anodized and I don't really like the way it feels. It feels rough, like a chalkboard. This could be any number of factors during the anodizing process, so I can't say for sure exactly what resulted in this. When I run my fingers on the surface, it feels like it could be chipped off or rubbed off pretty easily. Now there's no clear coat or soft polish of any sort. In comparison to something like the 7V, for example, that's also anodized, the 7V is really smooth. So this is one area I felt like could be improved. Last thing I want to say before jumping into the sound test, I like the tolerance and space for the keycap cutouts on the top case frame. It gives more room between the keycaps and the frame for easier access when pulling keycaps out. Now some keyboards have tighter tolerances and you may not be able to get your keycap puller in without scratching the inside of the case frame. Okay, let's jump into the sound test. I have four different configurations, and that's all with the foam layers installed, center foam only, bottom foam only, and no foam at all while rocking the aluminum plate and stock lavender switches.
Okay, I know for a fact that if I can get my hands on my own Suit R2, then I will be fully loading it with foam, because no foam or even partial foam installed, it sounds hollow and pinky to me, and just a bit off. Overall, I think the Mr. Suit TKL keyboard is an acceptable board for me personally. Um, as I mentioned, I will be trying for the R2. Now, just in comparison and also personal preference, I wouldn't put the Suit over the Mote 80 uh, in terms of like which board I would prefer, uh, because of mainly because of the aesthetics and also the ease of building. I think the Mote 80's aesthetics appeals to me a little bit more. Okay, as for the sound profile, I haven't quite built it or nailed down to what I personally like it yet because I've only had time to try one set of switches. But if I do get my hands on an R2, then I would be able to have more time to try different builds, different switches, and perhaps different plates as well for more content. Okay, that's it for now. The Mr. Suit R2 goes live November 6, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time US. I will be trying for one myself to make more content. Now, if you have a Mr. Suit keyboard right now, let me know what your build is. I want to know your thoughts and your experience down in the comments below. Love to hear from you. All right, so thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time. Oh,